What's up, All Stars? Welcome to the School of Ireland. I can't wait for you to watch this interview with my friend, Mr. Humma, who is such an incredible individual. Not only is he one of the goats when it comes to teaching AP Psychology, he's just an all around, awesome guy. Mr. Humma has been teaching AP Psychology since it was first offered back in 1992. And through this interview, you'll be able to quickly pick up on the fact that he loves teaching, he cares about his students, and he just truly wants the best for everyone. During our discussion, Mr. Humma shares how he's dealt with and is still dealing with the repercussions of a horrific accident that resulted in him being placed into a medically induced coma. Additionally, during the second half of the interview, we talk about some tips tips and tricks for success on the AP psychology test. So you're definitely going to want to watch that. Enjoy. Hey, Mr. Hunman, how you doing, sir? Okay. All right. It's good to finally talk to you face to face Same or face to face via zoom. So the other day we were going back and forth and you began to share with me some of your personal story. And I thought, number one, it'd be really cool for other people to hear what you have to share. And two, it might help benefit or encourage others that are dealing with similar things too. So um, if that makes sense. And oh, sure, sure. before we begin, I wanted to give the audience a heads up that we're going to kind of split this conversation into two parts. The first part, we're going to talk about your story, which relates a lot to uh, a lot of the topics that we talk about in psychology class. Mm -hmm. And the second part, we're going to talk about some tips to help kids crush the AP exam. Oh, yeah. And for those watching or listening to this, Mr. Hunma is one of the goats when it comes to AP psychology. He, he is the man. Um, how many years have you been teaching, by the way? Oh, teaching total 33. 33. I've, I've taught AP psychology since the first one in 92. See, see, one of the goats right there. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, do you mind sharing some of your story? Not at all. Not at all. I, I'm, I'm a little um, um, ambivalent about uh, saying that possibly the most interesting thing about me is something I don't or things I don't remember at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, back in 1996, I was on a um, vacation and we were um, a friend of mine and I were in uh, Utah and we were going to go see the, the parks and things. And um, from what I understand, we were in a, um, well, we were camping and all. The next thing I remember, it was, uh, the, the, the trip was in the summer. The next thing I really remember clearly, it was um, close to the end of the year. It was right around, it was wintertime, it was Christmas time. I was back in Hawaii where I lived. And I, I was at home. I had a roommate. I didn't know I had I had two cats that I didn't remember um I had all these aches and pains all, all over me and I had these um cryptic sc scribbles in a journal that I always write in and apparently I had been in a, a car car crash and I had been I had suffered some traumatic brain injury there and I basically lost my memory for the time but the thing is, um, I don't remember it, but I was pretty functional for most of the time. Huh. Um, I was in a, after the crash, I apparently was kind of um, combative and things. So I was put into a, a, a drug induced coma for 10 days. And when I woke up, they started the rehab and all I, um, uh, we were sitting still at an intersection, a car hit, I was driving, the car hit the door. So I broke my collarbone here and I, uh, most of these ribs, I guess. Um, I, I lost a lot of blood, but I had hit my head on my passenger's head. So I had, um, I had two skull fractures here. Apparently I had hit her twice and she turned to look apparently where the crash was. So she had a, she had fractured her front of her head on the side of mine. And then I had hit my, the back of my head on the, um, the headrest of the car. So I'll make sure that thing's right behind your head when you're driving around. 
Um, I was taken to a um, hospital at the, um, the Salt Lake City um, University Hospital and uh, br eventually brought back to Hawaii. But the thing is, I don't remember any of it. I, um, like I said, the next thing I remember, it was in the, um, it was in the winter, it was approaching New Year. I had, um, I had missed a lot of things. And I, 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 so I count myself as a year younger than I really am because I, I, I missed my birthday that year. So I figured it, does, it didn't count. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, um, but that was a very interesting experience, especially knowing what students of psychology know about the brain. When I thought about the symptoms I had, it made sense given the injuries that I had. For example, um, when I hit the back of my head, I must have damaged my occipital lobe because uh, for a long, for a while after I got my memory back, my vision was really messed up. And it was, it was interesting that things that were vertical were like almost at a 45 degree angle. So that's how you're perceiving it. Yeah. Yeah. And if I got tired, it wasn't steady. It started to move like this. So I couldn't drive for quite a while and I had to um, take tests and things like that. Um, I was really, really unsteady on my feet. And it was, it was actually kind of nice because um, I like I like to run, and I, I was determined to go, go out of the house. And I guess my <laughs> that was one of the reasons I I had this roommate where this person was there to kind of like keep an eye on me. But some of my past students, one of whom is is a physician now, would come over and take me for walks. Oh wow! And and just have to hold me because I was kind of veering all the time and not steady, mm -hmm. but they take me for walks and all. I don't know if I had a shock collar I, or maybe they put a little sweater on me like people do to their dogs when they're taking them for walks and stuff. I, I just hope they treated me with dig more dignity than that, <laughs> but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, um, I, I apparently was pretty functional and, but I just, could not, I had um, interrogated amnesia. I could not make new memories, but I could function okay. So every year in psychology class, when I watched, when we show the video about like Clive Waring and his memory yeah, yeah. loss, or that there was a movie called um, Memento years mm -hmm. ago that was mm -hmm. kind of like that, where the person can't remember things more than a few minutes or stuff. And a couple of my students, again, who had graduated and would come back and just, just sit with me, apparently really found it amusing that they come and visit and say goodbye, leave for a few minutes and come back. And they said, I'd be really happy to see them. And they would do this multiple times because I wouldn't remember that they, were, they had been there, mm -hmm. that they would leave. It's, and it's kind of like when Clive's wife leaves and comes back and he's really happy to see her. They said, oh, they found it really kind of amusing that... Um, I'd be really happy to see them. And um, I wouldn't remember that they had visited in the first place. Um, and, and for kids who don't know yet, um, anterograde amnesia is when you can't form new memories after a, a traumatic event, um, usually caused by physical injury yeah. or, or a stroke or something along those lines. And by I'm wondering if hitting the side of my head, maybe the um, temporal lobe, might have had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, I it was, it was funny too because now, I um, post concussion disorder is a known. It's in the DSM five, mm -hmm. but at the time when this happened, it happened in 1996. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, so various um, emotional things like being like um, um, easy to get kind of riled up and things like that um, was just one of those things. It wasn't necessarily seen as like, oh, necessarily a part of uh, an expected outcome of that injury. But mm -hmm. I think it probably was. But again, um, all I have to rely on is what people told me. It's really strange. I have photographs of myself mm -hmm. doing things. I taught, I taught school. Wow. How, how, do you know roughly how fast you were back after the accident to teaching? Uh, the accident happened in early June. Okay. So I'll, summer. I'll, yeah, yeah, I was, I was back um, in. Uh, we back day uh, one. I, I, I'm not sure, but it was before the semester ended. Sure. 
and um, I coached. Wow. I don't remember. Um, mm -hmm. I ran a race. I actually ran a race. Um, and I, I have pictures of it. I don't remember it at all. Wow. Um, and it's really eerie. One of the things I've done over the years is I've written in my little logbook all of my runs during the day, like what I did during the day, what you know, how, how it was. But I, I had also written down things during that time. And when I read it now, it's really interesting because it's my handwriting, obviously. And but I'm referring to things that I, I have no idea what I'm what I'm talking about. So, but, so it's legible, but you have no idea. You have no just, memory. No, I'm referring to things that I don't, I, I don't know. It's probably things that happened um, mm -hmm. in the hospital or doing rehab or, or I mean, my, my parents came to, they, they um, <laughs> I, our ID was very far away um, after the crash and we were helicoptered into the hospital. I kind of regret that. I bet that was a really beautiful helicopter ride. Um, I, I, I imagine like mash, the old mash, if I was on the outside yeah. of it in a yeah. blanket, I, I kind of doubt it, but I kind of like to think that that, <laughs> that was. Um, but I, we were without ID for days. Wow. And so, so um, when my, um, the state trooper who um, re was reported to the scene um, took it upon himself to drive our stuff all the way to Salt Lake City and deliver it to the hospital. Wow. How, do you know roughly how far away it was? Oh, Salt Lake it, was City? it was hundreds and hundreds of miles. Oh, wow. I mean, he, it was like, you know, we're up in the Canyon lands or something like that. And he, he drove, he drove out ways. What year was this again? In 1996. Wow. And I mean, I do remember his name, Doug Williams. Um, I think this is before he was the quarterback for the Buccaneers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but um yeah he he was a really stand-up guy and apparently apparently and i only know this because um a friend of mine another friend of mine who was going to meet up there who was actually another uh, a firefighter um came to see me in the hospital but apparently um i was going to be the the people that hit us um we're trying to say that I didn't have my seatbelt on and things like that. And that's why I got hurt. And she claimed she dramatically pulled the sheet down and showed her the, showed them the belt burn and the broken collarbone there yeah. and said, look at this again, this may or may not have happened. I'd like to think it did, Sure, but it sounds like it would have been really cool to actually be there when it, to have actually, <laughs> actually experienced yeah. it, you know, kind of that gotcha yeah. kind of thing. But um, it makes a good story. <laughs> I, I, um, well, but here's a question for you then. Um, do you remember the pain? No. No. So, so I, do you count that as a blessing or not? Yes. Yes. I um um my my wife is a registered nurse and she's worked in ICUs and ERs and stuff. And this happened uh, before, well, long before we met. Um, but she looked at my medical records and things like that, and. She said, don't count it as a blessing. You don't remember any of this stuff. She said, you had a lot of stuff done to you. And I, I mean, I basically broken all of these ribs yeah. and I needed several units of blood, um, yeah. all this, all of that sort of thing. And um, she said, oh yeah, don't, <laughs> you, you didn't, you didn't miss anything that you yeah. want to remember. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but it's interesting that I, think I remember stuff, but I, I, it's, it's all reconstructive. I don't, sure. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't verify any of the stuff that I remembered. Mm -hmm. um, the cats are mysterious. Um, <laughs> and my mother said, and again, I cannot verify this, but um, my mom, my mom's theory was that it was just some neighbors taking advantage of my, my um, weakened condition to press some kittens on me. Um, that they, that they had. <laughs> but those cats, uh, they they hung out a long time. In fact, one of them made it here to Pennsylvania with me, but I mean, he died shortly after. But those those cats lived to like be 17 years old, 18 wow. years old. But they just sort of, I mean, it was, it was really funny. It was kind of like the lights sort of came on slowly, like someone's turning up a dimmer. And I'm just sort of realizing like, okay, hmm. 
you know, I see someone living in my house. Um, hi. Yeah, who is this roommate? Who, who are you? Um, it was somebody I knew, but I'm not sure. I wasn't sure why they were living with me. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> and I saw the cats and things, and it was like, I, 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 I hurt because of the injuries and stuff, but it, it was just like uh, things like that had had happened because mm. it was months later. Um, so it was really interesting. I, I, one of the blessings of it is I did not experience any kind of like PTSD or anything from it yeah. because I don't remember it. Yeah. Um, I went back to the scene where it happened and I, I met the officer who reported to the scene and things like that. Oh, and wow. I, it, it didn't trigger anything. Sure. I, it was, it was all new, but I, um, but I did eventually make the rounds of the national parks and all. And it was, <laughs> it was the ones we went to were just as fresh the second time around. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not true because I didn't lose a lot of memory from before the, sure. the, the crash. Yeah. And it was, it was for months afterwards. And it was, um, it was this interesting little section of memory that just the folded that just got deleted. Now, do you remember like the instant of or sitting at, I think you said the stoplight? No. Okay. No. The last thing I remember was packing up. Uh, we were camping. Sure. And the last thing I remember was pa- trying to pack up the stuff and put it in the car. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I knew, I was in Hawaii. Um, my, my brother and um, my late sister and a couple of my cousins met me at the Honolulu airport before I went back to the Big Island where I live. And they said they they spoke to me and things like that, but I don't, I don't, I don't remember that nor the trip or, or sure. any anything. Um, my my mom just told me she said, oh, we just thought you'd recover better at home mm-hmm. than in the hospital, so they just kind of sp- sprung me. Um, but yeah, those those are, it's a it's, it's a real interesting thing. Um, and like I said, um, the psychology helped a little bit to understand what was happening. And fortunately, most of it came back. Now, um, I to this day, I still have some executive functioning um, challenges. Can you um, describe what that means? Um, like I can, um, you know, I can still spell and write and um, um, do very mediocre math. Um, you know, I. I, I asked one of my doctors, like, Doc, will I, will I be able to play the piano once I recover? And he said, oh, sure. I said, oh, that's great because I couldn't play it before. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> um, but um, I can do most of those things. But for example, one of the, there's a couple of things that I just cannot do. And um, when I coached cross country, it, that was something the guys on the team just knew is one of the things I can't do is orient myself in space. Um, we talk about um, um, the multiple intelligences with Gardner, not learning styles, but intelligences, the spatial intelligence. I just, I cannot look at a map that says you are here. And I, it makes no sense to me. I cannot take that and visualize where I am. I get lost all the time. Fortunately, my wife and my children have really pretty good senses of direction, but otherwise, um, I run my GPS every day when I drive to work because I will, I will blow it. And once I get lost, I get very lost. I, I can't um, reorient myself. Um, if we go to a mall or something like that and I get separated from my family, I just stay in one place because they can find me a lot better than I'll do just kind of wandering around and stuff like that. Um, yeah, maps and things. I, I mean, I can read a map and tell you, you know, where um, the states are and things like that. But as far as like visualizing where my town is relative to like, oh, where you are or, mm-hmm. you know, where DC is and stuff. Like right mm-hmm. now I'm sitting in the house. Um, if I was to point in the direction, if you told me like, like I know west, uh, west is that way because that's where the sun sets. Mm-hmm. If you told me to look at a map and point to say Philadelphia, I, it would be guesswork. Really? I, um, it takes me a long time to figure out stuff like in the, I still get, I, I've been at the school I'm at right now. I've been there for six years going on seven. I, I still get turned around. 
like I'll I'll run into dead ends and things like that. I'll just get I'll just get lost. Um and it's and that's just one of those things. Um so when I go running, I kind of like repetitious courses, like a loop or just go and turn around and come back. Um and GPS has been a godsend because I am really, really, really bad at um um knowing where I am. Um, one time at the AP reading, it was at Daytona Beach. And um, I, I, it was before GPS. It was before the internet too. It was back in, was it? It was 2003 anyway. And I would run out for, you know, half an hour or whatever and turn around and come back. And I missed the point coming back where I was, where the hotel was. And that's a big beach. They don't have beaches really. I had Hawaii doesn't have beaches that big. Um, and it's an island. You can only get so lost. Um, and I just kept going. <laughs> um, I, I saw someone was Rob McIntyre for it, um, who still kind of kids me about it. He, I, he said, Oh, so where'd you rent it? I said, Well, I went to this particular pier or something like that. And someone said, That's in the, like the next town. And I was like, Yeah. Um, I had to. I stopped at a person's house and asked him if I could drink out of their hose and things because I was really, really thirsty and dehydrated. I mean, I was just totally lost, and it was pretty miraculous that I made it back. Um, so that's that's one thing, and it's just it's just not there. It's just not there. Um, a um, is that frustrating? In, in, a, in a sense, yeah, because you, when I think I've learned it just to repetition, because I mean, apparently even Clive Waring did learn, he could input some things, but when I think that that's happened, I get lost again. Um, this morning I did an errand before going to my, my, to pick up my children at their swim camp and it was all in town and I set my GPS because I knew I, I knew the chances of it and I'd be really late. Um, the other thing is doing things in sequential order. I have a really hard time with that. I mean, I need to have it on a list. Um, and um, well, we kind of experienced that too. And I was, I thought it was the wrong day for our, for this conversation. I, yeah, keeping things in sequential order, like you do this. Um, oh my gosh, if I was a chef or something like that, dessert would be the main course frequently um I, I, there's no there's nothing wrong with that, I, that exactly <laughs> exactly um it's meant to be but it's it's real it's real interesting that it's just um it, it's like you know how things logically should go in a particular sequence it just doesn't make sense to me like that a should come before b before c and all this stuff um kind of like the algebra thing like i it so is um, it hard like if you're doing research like looking through the index or something like that oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah um i am i'm not sure i could write a formal paper anymore i mean i need a lot of help okay so i'm kind of waiting for my children to get a little older um <laughs> <laughs> but i mean it, oh that would be a nightmare i i'm just trying to keep things in order because you know if you have a an equation with a lot of steps and there's you know, which you, you add first, you multiply, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, it makes perfect sense to just jump in anywhere. Sure. And I, I just can't see, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I don't, it's, um, it's interesting. But when I, um, when I used to coach my, um, the runners I had were very patient with that and they, they'd help me. And I had a, I had a, some really good assistants who would just take that, take over. I do remember one time I was talking about a map and saying, okay, you know, we're looking at it. We went to another island for a meet and I was pointing out the map and stuff like that. And one of the runners said, oh, coach, you got the map upside down. He kind of, and he kind of turned it around. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, um, I was trying to feel like, I was trying to be confident and things like that. Like, sure. this, you know, do this, do this, do this. And the boys are just kind of looking at each other like, mm, mm, mm. and, 
I, I appreciated that. And they, they, they did it in a, in a nice way. They just said, oh, coach, you, got, you, the map, you have the map, I'll play down. Yeah. But I just couldn't. Did they realize? Yeah. Did yeah. you tell them? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and that was something that was, um, it was, it was, yeah, they were real, they were real good about it. They were real good about it. And my, um, my students were too, because I, <laughs> um, like I said, that was before the days of the internet and things like that. And, you know, my, um, the, the, my students, they, they did okay. You know, and I think they, and they, um, to the best of my knowledge, never took advantage of the situation or anything like that. They might have, but I wouldn't, I didn't, <laughs> I don't, rem I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's much better now. I mean, today when I experience normal periods of forgetfulness, um, I try really hard to fight and uh, fight attributing it to that. You know, like if something just slips my mind, I had an appointment this morning and it completely slipped my mind. I say, oh, okay, well, that's just, me being a knucklehead is not anything to do with that because it's been such a long time. Um, one thing I do, I guess regret is that um, I don't play anything that requires, that has any kind of potential for um, um, contact. Um, I used to love playing pickup basketball. Oh, I was quite the leaper. No, actually, actually, I was pretty terrible, but um, I really liked <laughs> I, I liked playing. I, that's yeah. all I was. I loved playing, but I just stopped because I um, I just can't afford it. Um, the doctor did say that once you've had that kind of head injury, it's a lot. Of, the threshold for getting another yes. is lower. So um, I'm very very hesitant to ride a bike. Um, that 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 sort of thing. Um, I. I, I, I whack my own head when I make mistakes and I think I got to take it easy on that too. Um, but um, all in all, I consider myself very lucky um, to have walked away from that with um, a lot of lessons learned. You know, um, I had a seatbelt on, that saved my life. And um, um, I had a really supportive um family and coworkers and things like this back in Hawaii and stuff. And that they really helped. They were very patient with me and brought me, you know, brought me along and all. And that's something that was very, that was very fortunate. I, you know, I think of people who maybe suffer that kind of injury and maybe they don't even realize it and struggle with it for the rest of their lives and things. Um, yeah. You know, when people talk about um, um, thinking problems and, oh, or, or, or being on the autism spectrum or things like that, it's very, very, very hard to articulate the nuances of those experiences. I mean, when I, it, 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 it used to be embarrassing to not, to get lost so easily, but it's very, um, that's just how it is. And I've come to sort of come to grips with that. And I, I mean, I, GPS has been a godsend. I mean, I, I, I use it all the time and I need it. Um, but I, th I think with this kind of thing, um, having these different coping mechanisms and things were, 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 were helpful, you know? Um, but like I said, it, all that stuff might be very interesting, but I really don't remember the, the lion's share of it. Sure. Well, were there any other lessons you mentioned? There was a lot of lessons learned with us. Um, the, the, the malleable nature of memory. I mean, there were certain things that I, swear I remember happening in, in the hospital and things like that that didn't that didn't um I the um when the in the crash itself I was sitting we were sitting at a stop a stop sign and we got broadsided by a truck pulling a horse trailer and based on reading the reports they had pulled over on the shoulder to um I guess maybe let cars go. They were coming down a hill. And so they, they broadsided us. Um, and the car, um, my mom said she, she received a picture of the car from the insurance company and asked me once if I wanted to see it. And I, I, I said, no, um, because she said it was just, you know, crumpled. But um, um, they used the jaws of life to um, free me. And again, I wish I could have 
seen that in a sense because it sounds really cool. Um, but the state trooper, the highway patrolman in Utah who had um, reported to the scene talked about how um, um, combative I was. And apparently after um, severe injuries, head injuries and things, people do that. They, sometimes people get um, um, very combative and uncooperative. A um, couple of my proud, proudest moments that I don't remember from this. Um, I, the, when I was in the car and they, they had um, spread the wreckage away to get me out, the fire, the first responders had a hard time getting to me because I was so um, combative and they didn't want to hurt me or use some of their tools, their cutting tools and things because so I was like flailing around. Punching at them, yeah. punching at them. Wow. Yeah. And this side of my body, my ribs are all broken and my um, collarbone was broken. So in my right hand, I was like fighting them off. And the state trooper who came to, um, who was the first to the scene, um, he's, he gave, he gave me this, like, again, I, I wear this as a badge of honor. He said, hey, you're pretty tough for a little guy, you know? And I think at the time too, um, it's kind of like someone who maybe is really um, under the influence of drugs and things like that, where you're not really feeling pain. Cause I'm sure I was, I was really hurt, but you're just so pumped up with adrenaline and things like that. Yeah. So I was fighting him off. So this fellow said, he just lay on top of me like a blanket and just pinned me down. Um, and so they, cut the car away and when they're putting me on the helicopter and I again I really regret not seeing the helicopter ride because it's in the <laughs> mountains of Utah but it was beautiful <laughs> um, um but anyway um when they, they I was I guess I was doing myself more more harm and that they had um they sh strapped me to a um a, a gurney or something like that sure. and I apparently I busted out that like maybe the Vel I don't know the Velcro I, I like to think of them as maybe like chains and yeah, stuff like that but I'm strapping you down <laughs> yeah but apparently I busted out with my, my, <laughs> my good hand and and they had they had to like um like get out something else and really try and immobilize me and that's why they um they put me in a, um, a drug-induced coma that I was oh. just too um uncooperative oh. and they they kept me under for like 10 days um so um those are my two um, bragging points that the state trooper called me a tough, tough for a little guy. I'll, I'll take that asterisk. Um, <laughs> and that I, I, I broke out of, I, I, I'll say straight jacket. <laughs> it probably wasn't, but I say like I, I broke, broke off, broke to the restraints. And my wife was a nurse that, oh, they're probably old or they didn't press the Velcro down good. <laughs> that's so defeating that's it so really defeating. was she said if if i was there you wouldn't have gotten loose oh man, I was like, oh. Oh, man. but hey i'll take it i'll take what i can get you know um and um but i have this i had this image in my mind of what the trooper i guess name i still remember the name doug williams i i owe him a lot um i had this image of what he looked like and um, I went back eventually uh, about a year later to the scene to see if I maybe, I don't know, maybe I'd remember something and I didn't, but I went to visit him. And when I met him, I was sort of like, who are you? He didn't look at all like I remembered. And the only thing I could think of was I, my mind had picked someone who I'd seen on TV or something to fill in the blank of what this this trooper looked like, but the real guy apparently didn't look anything like him. Mm. Um, I thought that was that was, um, I thought that was amusing. Uh, he did tell me a story that I, I said, you know, um, I, I I cannot possibly repay you. That I said, please, you know, come to Hawaii and visit and all, you know. And he said, um, oh no, I. Uh, um, no, the flight and stuff. I said, oh, you know, it's not that bad and all. And I said, ooh, you know, you kind of afraid to fly. And he said, no, no, no. I was on the governor's security detail. I've flown in helicopters and private planes all the time. I said, oh, so what's the hesitation? He said, oh, because if we were to crash, I'm afraid the sharks would eat me. And I said, no, 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 no. The, the crash would do it. You don't have to worry about the sharks. And I, he found that less than reassuring. Um, yeah, yeah. So I... Uh, <laughs> but and 
and after that too, I mean, during the, during the season and things like that, um, there are things that I thought I remembered or about the hospital itself that just weren't. Sure. And it was, it was very interesting how certain I was of those things. And I still have these, these memories of them, but it, it didn't happen. You know, and it was really, um, that, that, thing we teach in psychology class about how your memory is not a video that you replay the same way every time that that made that really a very interesting experience that no it's not but you but it doesn't erase what was there um that that image is still there it's just that you know it's wrong i mean i see pictures of myself doing things during that time period i know i was there i know that's me but i don't remember it yeah it's like i don't remember anything of it like you know um and it uh, that was that was neat. And to hear my um um I had students who came to visit me and things like that, take me for walks and things like that that were that I really that I really appreciated. That was really that was a that was a good I really appreciated it, but again, I don't remember them. I mean and that's I, amazing I, that they helped you out like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um I mean literally taking me for walks. Um, because my vision was so messed up and my balance was really off. Um, so just holding me by the arm and just taking me for walks and things. Um, and just coming to visit and just, just talking. And um, I think I mentioned a couple of my students or a couple of jokers, they would come over and visit me. And we talk and say goodbye and they'd leave and come back. <laughs> and I'd be really happy to see them again. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, and they'd yeah. be happy and they'd probably have the exact same conversation <laughs> again. And they'd leave, they'd come back and they do this multiple times and they, they found this really amusing. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was, I was happy to see them. Yep. And it was just, it was, it was kind of neat. And they, they still, if I see them, then they're, they're grown men now, but it's, it's really interesting to. Um, do do you ever hear from any of them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and they're, you know, they're doing, they're, they're doing well, they're doing well, but it's, it's, it was neat to sort of, um, you know, when you're the, when you're a teacher helping students and all, it was kind of uh, interesting for them, for the tables to sort of turn and for them to help bring you along. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I just regret not remembering it um, because I bet, I bet it was a, I bet it was a lovely time, you know, um, except for the pain. That's true. Yeah. If I remembered that, I would have remembered a lot of other stuff too. So I, yeah, I'm kind of glad I didn't. Um, I remember my mom, you know, I, a lot of people talk about their intelligence and all, but I have it in writing that I'm normal, you know, because I've been tested. Um, <laughs> apparently, um, during my rehab, they had me take um, um, various psychological tests, sure. various batteries. Um, and I was um, right in the fat part of the curve for the IQ test. So I was like, yeah, you know, um, um, one standard deviation, baby. Um, <laughs> but, um, um, but I also took the, um, the MMPI. And apparently that's a pretty grueling one. It's, it's, is, that, is that the one with like 300 questions? There's 300 true or false questions. <laughs> I don't remember the time I had, but there's, yeah, there's one sound, of them. That doesn't there's, sound fun. There's one of them that has like th some like 300 questions that are very repetitious in nature. Mm -hmm. And my, um, I don't, I don't remember taking it, but my mom scolded the rehab, the, the psychologist <laughs> because she said it wiped, it wiped me out. <laughs> yeah. Just the energy. Uh, she said, don't ever do that to them again. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but it was, um, it was kind of neat. I think as a psychology teacher, I would have found that whole process really interesting too, you know, to actually be able to, to talk about it. But um, it was very gratifying to see my records and to see it in writing that I'm um, within the range of normal. You know, being, people claim that all the time, but I can, I can show you, I can show it to you in writing that I, that I, that I'm normal, you know, um, at least, at least then. Now I, I, I don't know, but um, that was, it was, it was interesting. And just look at the, the battery of tests and things like that. Um, because before I could drive, they needed to make sure that I was, I had recovered. Um, and I, 
have to think that there was some brain plasticity too, because I had some pretty good wax on my head. I mean, I had three skull fractures and some pretty, pretty good bleeding up there. Um, but the things that I couldn't do right after the crash, a, a lot of them sort of came back. Like my vision went from seeing vertical vertical things at like a 45 degree angle to it's, it's fine now. Yeah. You know, and um, I was never a, a gymnast or anything like that, but my sense of balance is, is better and things like that. And, um, but I remember, I do remember being really unsteady on my feet. Um, it must so have been tough early on, with especially running. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but again, my, um, the athletes ahead were very, were very good about it. They're very good about it. And I was, and I was fortunate to have some really, really good assistants also. Um, I just wish, I just, I wish I remembered more sure. because um, I'll bet it wasn't all fun either. Cause they had to, yeah. they had to pick up for me and um, carry my load. I'm sure. You know. Now speaking of plasticity, have you had, recent not maybe recent but uh brain scans after the accident um no no but i had i had quite a few of them at the time um the and this is a i mean it was a while ago but i did have quite a few at the time um the the town i lived in in hawaii it was a little town in hawaii um was also where um, a person named um, um, Dr. Bakken lived, and he 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 invented the um, um, pacemaker, the battery-powered pacemaker. And so um, he was very generous to our hospital. So we had like a um, like an MRI and a CAT scan in our little town. Wow! So I I had I had, I had quite a few things done there, you know, and um, that was. I apparently recovered okay, you know, um, and I'm, I, I have to imagine that um, a lot of the injuries were, were from pressure from the blood being there. Um, I'm not sure how much of the brain was actually lesioned. Sure. You know, so, so you've I, never I, seen the scans yourself or? No, no. Um, yeah, no, I have, I have not. As a psych I'm teacher, not. is that something you would be interested in seeing? Now that you bring it up, I never thought about it, but yes, I would. I have a couple of um, um, MRIs of my knees because I've mm -hmm. had knee surgery, but that's nowhere near as exciting. Um, no, it's the, the brain's so fascinating. Yeah, a little meniscus tear is like. Mm, mm. That's just that's just pain. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> that's I, not fun. Um, but that might be something. I'll, that might be something. That would be something really interesting to see if they still exist. Um, because no, I'm not. I've not. I've not seen them. I mean, I know where the injuries were, but I don't know what happened underneath them. You know? If those records still exist and you wouldn't mind sharing them, I think it'd be cool to do a follow-up. Oh, that'd be neat. That'd be neat. I mean, I, that is really, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. Um, and my wife can read those records and all yeah. these works in healthcare. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty hopeless and stuff like that. So that, that, that'd be really interesting. That, that'd be really neat. Um, I hope, I hope they didn't take out anything without telling me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bad news. The good news is uh, you would have missed it by now. The bad news is, uh, yeah. So, like I said, I think it's an, it was an interesting experience, but I just, um, but I can't. I don't remember it. It's um, it's like being at a having a great time at a party, but you don't remember it. You know. Uh, uh yeah so then you have any other questions about that particular yeah episode? so what advice would you give someone who maybe has had um an amnesia event or um is struggling with executive functioning um stuff like that i you know when i got hurt it was it was in 96 um but i really took advantage of um, aids to help me remember. Um, cell phones didn't exist back then, but I had a little pocket recorder and I would just 
I would just say stuff at it, like things to, that happened during the day. Um, I had to write reports on students, you know, um, at the end of the semester and things, just summative reports of how a student sure. did in class and things like that. And so um, pretty, pretty regularly, like daily if possible, I would just write, I would just record like experiences I had with different um, students that were distinctive. I had a neat conversation with, with this student about, oh, I, I don't know, horses or something like that, sure. that I could use in the report later on. Because um, on, in the early days, the, the memory was still not getting in, obviously, because I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. um, and just writing things down. I mean, I, I am pretty fastidious about writing down my, um, I'm trying to see if I have one of them here. I am pretty careful about writing down all of my, um, all of my workouts. I've been running. I, I, I love to write down what I did when I ran and stuff. But I'd also write down other things that happened. And that was... That's that was like gold, and just things to remember what I did. Um, and today, I I still do it with my phone now because it's so much better at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can make little videos for myself and um, just record myself or take pictures and things like that. Something that I still have a really hard time with. It takes me a long time is learning my new students' um, names. I. I work really hard at it, but it's it's something that I have a really hard time with that I didn't particularly. I mean, that's that's not easy for anybody, any teacher. Yeah, no, have. I'm guilty of that um, too. But I mean, it's it's tough. And this past year with the masks and all that was tough. I actually told some of my students, like, if you come to see me next year, bring your mask so you, so you can put it on, so I can recognize you with because of just your face. I don't know who you are. Sure, I never saw your face. You know, sure. Um, I had the opposite problem of um, we weren't in school in person until near the end of the year. Oh, wow. And, and we did semesters for the first time in our, our school's history. I know every school district around the nation's dish, uh, different. And all I had was either they would turn on their screen or I would have a yearbook photo in the, uh, what do you call it? The attendance taking program that was like two years old. And oh. then, so kids, finally started showing up near the end of the year and they'd be like, Hey, Mr. Island, all I could see was the, their eyes. And I had them first semester. And usually the only memory I had of them was their yearbook photo that was two <laughs> years old. And I was just like, I'm so sorry, please. <laughs> Who are you? Um, yeah, it, it's tough. So I get that. I totally get that. I, you know, I think something that was hard to do, but important was to try and, um, give it time too, and not get super frustrated about stuff because I know for me, it doesn't help at all. Um, when I get, but I, I mean, I get lost all the time. I get lost all the time. And it's just easier now to just, it makes it so much easier just to ask, just to ask somebody. And, and most people are very nice and nice about it. And, and the majority of people have no idea of why you just, you're just asking them where to go as opposed to getting really frustrated with it. Um, uh, I, I'm real careful about documenting things either with pictures or words now, because I mean, I just aware of how quickly those things can, can go away. I mean, that, I mean, basically for four months of my life, just boom, gone. And I just have, I only have, I can only rely on other, external source of information for them. But I am glad that I was able to write things down or other people took pictures of it and things like that. I mean, I have a, I mean, a first semester of class, a fall cross country season that I do not remember at all. I, I don't remember at all. And I am glad that there's some traces of it that I can rely on, but it's at this point, Nothing's gained from being frustrated about it or angry, angry about it. I mean, it's just something that happens. Um, the, the and there and there is stigma too of someone not being able to do certain things, especially with the executive function thing, because it's not um, obvious. I mean, it's natural to express <coughs> compassion or whatever for someone that has a leg and a cast. Sure. But um, 
these things that are much, much, much harder to see and possibly much more long lasting um, aren't always evident. And I think it's as someone that experiences that, um, just to keep in mind that most that people don't know, people don't know what's going on and stuff. And it's um, easier said than done, but it's a waste of time to be frustrated with someone or angry at someone because they expect you to do something that you that you, you can't. Um, I. And I know I've I've come to know what I can and cannot do, and I just don't um, I just don't do those things like like I said like like playing basketball or, or stuff like that. I just don't I just don't do it because I can't risk another head injury. Okay, okay, you know, um, and buckle up, <laughs> buckle up in this in the car, um, because that that was that was that saved my life. I mean, it really it really did. And apparently, I was a enthusiastic participant in the rehab, uh, my neurological rehab, and everything else. So that that all that all helped. Also, sounds like you're a competitive person. So, did that help you think? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. I know. Um, there's this one race in Hawaii. It's a, a six and a half mile one, and it gains like three thousand feet in the six and a half miles. It's it's and it's um and but the race director is a good friend of mine always says there's only one hill it's just six and a half miles long um, oh man and like um it's really really steep but i just remember much to the horror of my like my family and all that um i really wanted to do that race that when I had recovered enough, um, that I really wanted to do that one, and that I knew if I could do that one, that I was more okay than not, you know. Um, and I, I apparently I did it, but I don't, I don't remember it, you know. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm glad I did, and that's what one of my students who would come back and take me for walks. He said, all you want to do is get, get running again. <laughs> you know, and I was, I was, I was, I don't know, I guess proud of that. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. And I think for people with injuries and all like that, that they can, they can get better. They can, they can and do get better. In, in most cases. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's true. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I mean, but there's, I don't know. I think I've always had this, um, um, internal locus of control too that there's stuff you can do about it yep. but like you say in most cases it, that can work against you if you really are not gonna re- um, progress in this that at a certain point you can get really frustrated and thinking that you you, you can you know mm. um, um, but I think it's I, I don't know. I, I kind of like to fin. I, I kind of enjoyed figure the, figuring those things out for myself, mm-hmm. rather than just you know assuming that I wouldn't be able to. Um, I know my my parents were very 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 hesitant for me to do anything because they really didn't want me to get hurt again. And I remember my mom saying when she got to the hospital, I was the um. My chart said unidentified Asian male. Okay, kind of like it does today. Um. But um, I was in the hospital for days before they ID'd me. Mm-hmm. And um, so she and my dad r- rushed up there and um, um, talked about different kinds of kindnesses they received from strangers there. Um, she said they checked into their, I guess it would have been like a bed and breakfast, but a cab driver came to pick them up and took them to the hospital and turned off the meter and sat outside till they were done to take wow. them back home. So they wouldn't need to get another cab. Um, awesome. the, the, the trooper bringing all of our stuff hundreds of miles. Um, but she said when she got in the hospital, the first thing she did was um, um, check out my legs. Take your run. Yeah. And she said she knew, she said she, you know, she pulled off the sheets and she said, okay, then if those are okay, he, and I was still I was still unconscious at the time. She said, "You know, these, he'll 
he'll be okay. He'll be okay. And I, and that was that was that was kind of. I, I don't I don't talk to them too much about it. No, oh, my dad has passed since then, but I, I don't. That was a I. Being a dad, I I cannot imagine how difficult yeah. that was for them. Yeah. Um, but you know, it it was it was uplifting in the sense of so many people came forward to help. So many people showed showed aloha, as they say in Hawaii, to help. You know, and it's it's unfortunate it took that it was in response to that kind of thing, but. I don't, I don't think it has to be, you know, mm-hmm. all those people, I think they're, they're good inside and it just needed an opportunity to come on. Yeah. If, if people would just be kind all the time, this world would look so much different. Try to put others first and just be nice. It, it does not yeah. take much to be nice. It does not take much. And that's what I try to tell my kids. Um, be nice to each other. Makes mm-hmm. life so much better. Mm-hmm. So much better. Yeah. It so sure does. It sure I have does. a couple follow-up questions for you. Um, I think you alluded to it. Yeah. Uh, but what about your the passenger in your car? What happened? Um, she, <laughs> we fractured um, our skulls on each other. That's right. So she That's had right. she she had um, f- a fracture right in the front here, and she lost her memory for a little bit also. Um, but fortunately that was the lion's share of her injury. So she, I mean, she wasn't okay, but she, um, she, she got most of her injuries from me as opposed to the car sure. hitting us. So that was, that was, that was fortunate. Mm-hmm. That was, that was fortunate. I, we haven't spoken for a long time, but um, um, I was, I was glad of that. As and- far as, as far as I know, she's okay. Yeah. And the other thing is how long would you say it took you to kind of stop being frustrated with maybe the, the location stuff or stuff like that? Uh, (laughs) Going on 25 years now. Um, I mean, it, it. I can say all the right things, but I, I, I will say. I mean, if it's one of those things that when you, um, it's like picking like me deadlifting a five thousand pound weight. It's like you reach down and you just can't do it, mm-hmm. you know. And I, it's it's it's. It's tough to look at a map. Like when we go to the mall, um, um, my family and I went to Bush Gardens a few weeks ago. Nice. And to look at the map and it's like, you are here. And it means nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it means absolutely nothing. Um, and I I feel like a, a, a liability like to my, my, my family, my children and stuff when dad doesn't know where the heck he is. I mean, they, they know this, they, they, they kind of understand this, Mm -hmm. but it's, um, that, that's, that's tough. And it's one of those things where, um, um, it, it is, that is still frustrating, but technology has helped a lot of it, but in a situation like, like Bush Gardens and stuff, um, um, it's, 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 it's tough. I mean, I, um, and I've led them on many a uh, wild goose chase and a good thing about it though, is it, it is humbling where sometimes it's, it's best if someone else, um, um takes the wheel, so to speak. Sure. Because there's, you, you, you um, what's the dirt, dirty Harry and Magnum force or something. And man's got the noise limitations. You know, if that's something you can't do, you just don't, <laughs> at this point i'm not going to pretend yeah and if that means i have to can i do if that means i have to carry a um, little pocket map of my campus so be it on my id tag um my um class schedule if it rotates at all i 
fair, not often, but fairly often, I'm surprised by what class walks in. Because I can be dead bang certain that this, this is period D, section one, and it's not. Um, or I'll look at us, and that's the whole sequential thing. I mean, when the schedule moves and things like that, I have a really, really, really hard time following us. And sometimes I'll just have students who don't have any problems with that. It's, it always amazes me how students can memorize their schedules at all. Um, especially when it's arbitrary, like four minute passing time and things like that. It's yeah, like, well, yeah. On, well, the next class starts at 1113. Yeah, you know whenever, whenever they switch, switch up the days for like half days or whatever, it's a mess. I'm always I mean, asking kids, hey, what, what period are we going? All right, all right, cool. Yeah, like I'll have a slide up on the board. I'll have a map of Europe on the board and things like that. And the psych class will walk in. Oh, okay, you know, um, but that's, and at this point, because it's been so long, um, it's, I, I feel self-conscious about it because it, it does feel like just someone who's like a, who's incompetent, can't keep track of stuff and things like that, which, which is true to a large extent. It's tough. But it's yeah, tough. yeah. And um, to, to just not know where my car is and things like that. You know, it's just the, the little things like that just sort of have, they still, I mean, I'd be, I'd be, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said that didn't frustrate me and it, it does. But like I said, it's just like you, you, you reach, you, you reach for it. You try to, you, you, I, I can't improve it. It's just, that's just the way it is. So, you know, um, uh, just kind of live with that, you know? Yeah. Uh, is there anything else in regards to this you would like to share? I think too, having just said all of that stuff, there's nothing wrong with um, like setting your goals and stuff like that, depending on how, what you're able to do. You know, like I, I really like to run and now I'm, I'm older and stuff too. And, um, I, you know, since my, since, since my accident and stuff, I was trying to like always measure how close I could get to what I could do beforehand, sure. before the crash, you know, and things like that. And that's, that's not wise <laughs> because you, you, you're, you're, you're not going to do it, but at the same time, um, I did things that I was quite proud of. But at the time, very frustrated with because I couldn't surpass what I had done before. And now when I look back on it with the benefit of hindsight, it's like, that, that was okay. Given what you were experiencing at the time, that was, that was okay. And I think, I think we all kind of experienced that the last couple of years with the pandemic and stuff like that, you know? Um, yeah, maybe the year was far less than ideal, but well, did, what did you do with the with what you had. Sure. You know, and I think in most cases, when we look at it through that lens, we, we did all right. The count your blessings kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, 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 and no matter how, no, no matter how far you get, it's, it's farther than you got if you hadn't, if you didn't do anything, if you didn't start, but I'm just saying that there's, there's nothing wrong with adjusting your, your goals depending on what your actual situation is. Um, and I like that. Yeah. And I think we are, I think that's a healthy thing for us to, an attitude, a, a healthy attitude for us to have with our students, but also for ourselves. I mean, because students and teachers are, are we're all beating ourselves up over the last couple of years about mm -hmm. what we should have done, could have done, wish we did, and things like that. But it's given the circumstances. I go out on a limb and say we 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 did the best we could. Absolutely. And I I kind of try to remember my remind myself of that even 25 years later. Like, okay, yeah, you don't do that so well, but then oh, you did the best you could. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Because most of the time there's somebody there that's willing to give it. I and I really believe that. And I really, really believe that. Yeah. So oh quite a stroll on memory lane there. Well, thank I, you for sharing that and being willing to open up about that and share that publicly. 
Yeah, you know, one of the big reasons I don't feel that hesitant about it is because it's almost like it happened to somebody else. Hmm. You know, I don't remember a lot of the, the actual injuries and discomfort of it. You know, I, I don't. So it's like telling the story of what happened to, to Phineas Gage yeah. or, or yeah. you know, something like that. It happened to somebody else. It's, it was a terrible thing, but it happened to somebody else. I, I really don't I haven't internalized this feeling like that happened to me. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's really, it's really strange. It's really strange. Um, I, uh, it's almost like being like a hallucinogen or something like that. You know, I, um, I'm quite the teetotaler. It's, you know, I've never been like drunk or, or stoned or anything like that, but sure. I, like, but I kind of think of this as like, kind of like that, like this one major, like a um, hallucinogenic fugue for a few months. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that brain injury is heavy stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the funniest question I get from people though, is like, Oh, what was a com- What was it like being in a coma? I don't know. <laughs> I was really, really. People was, ask you that all, all the time. It's like, what was the coma like? Like, and or, or that you wake up like feeling like, ah, oh, that was oh, that felt good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, oh like, man, oh man. I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's transition now over to kind of tips and tricks for the AP Psych test because I think that'll help out students a lot. So, I guess my first question would be, you know, it's the week before the exam, mm. what are you reminding students to do or study or think of, et cetera? I think a really important thing for students to do is to keep in mind the importance of applying terms and concepts to new or novel situations. I mean, and I think going through flashcards and things like that, um, watching review videos are really cool, really good. But I think it's really also really good to take those things and as you're sort of walking around, just try to apply them like how, okay, how, what would, how can we make up a question here? Like if you're, even if you're sitting in class and things like that, okay, all right, miss, you know, how would I apply this to what's going on right now? What, what would Mr. Jones say when this happens? Because I think when we study previously released exams and old multiple choice questions and free response questions, those are really good practice, but the one thing we know for sure is we're not going to see those que- particular questions again. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have to apply those same skills to something slightly new. And I think that's a very, very important skill to acquire. Um, I think vocabulary and concepts are super important also because it saves you so much time to use the proper term or concept rather than describing it which may be just as good, but it'll take you twice as long. Um, Also, there is, oh gosh, if it's the exam is coming up in the the week or or, uh, in a week or 10 days or whatever, and say you haven't done any content all year, like you haven't read your textbook or anything like that, that's that's very far from ideal. Um, In that particular situation, it would be like, Oh, gosh. Say um, someone is, has made it to the big, um, the big game, the, the Super Bowl or something like that. All right, we haven't practiced all year. We better have a super hard practice the three days before the big game. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's not going to help. Not going to work at all. It, it might actually hurt. Yes. So I think the last week or two before the exam is a time to do different kinds of review. Some review is obviously better than others and different things work for different students and different teachers have different techniques for that. But a lot of that foundation needs to be put in ahead of time. And that's something that, I mean, really the best thing you can do to prepare for the exam is to to go to class every day, participate. Um, But there really is no substitute for acquiring content you do need to get the content somewhere. Reading the reading your textbook is a great place. Um, there's a lot of the review books that can be helpful. There's a lot of neat um, review videos for them that can be great also. But one way or another, you need to get the content in and your teacher can't um, water you like a 
plant in the garden. You, you need to, um, that's something that needed to have come a long way before that. Sure. If we even get, if we get even closer to the exam, um, to continue that sports metaphor, pulling the heroic all nighter the night before the exam because of a guilty conscience of not having done the content, or even worse, you had done, you have covered the content, but you're going to do, pull that all nighter anyway, will do you more harm than good. Absolutely. That's, that's like that, again, that someone who's getting ready for their big event, hitting the weight room the day before and maxing out and a you know, trying to achieve personal best that day. Um, it, it's, it, that's not going to do much good there. Uh, I've given the advice and I'll stand by it that a good night's sleep for someone who genuinely feels unprepared will do much more good than cramming or those last minute things ever will. Um, unfortunately, we, we tend to wear it, almost wear it as a badge of honor to kind of yeah. talk, talk about the sacrifices we made to stay up late or how many caffeinated drink drinks <laughs> I ingested the night before and things like that. Yeah. It just, uh, so everybody knows our, our advice is not to wait till the week before to start studying. No, no. Um, like I best advice would be to, you know, study throughout the year or if it's a semester class throughout the semester, as you're going along and learn, you know, each unit and then kind of refresh each unit as you're going along. Um, but definitely don't wait to the last week to start or two weeks to start studying everything. That's, it's not going to go well in most cases. Um, something that's interesting that's can be very helpful to do too, is to combine units because a lot of times, especially with free response questions, they're not on only one topic. There's always going to be, uh, some biology or something with cognition. Mm -hmm or with a research, a particular researcher or something like that. It's obviously you organize your studying by putting them into the, the nine units of the, the um, course and exam description, but it is very helpful sometimes to study out of order rather than one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, because the exam is not in any sort of order. Correct. I mean, your very first question could be on um, Milgram's obedience experiment. Mm -hmm. And the very last question could be, um, um, who is the, uh, who created the first um, laboratory? Psych lab, yeah. I wouldn't know, but that could be a question. <laughs> that could be a question they'd ask. <laughs> um, and there are, lots of resources out there and some things work better for some people than others. And I think it's very important early on. And this is something that you can work with your teacher that you can work with your teacher with uh, over and, and find what works for you. Hopefully it's something that works for the, a lot of people in the class and all, but different people, you need to find what works for you. Now, that's not to be confused with, oh, I learn better if I just read the night before the test. No, that doesn't work for anybody. <laughs> um, yeah. You might feel like it does, but mm -hmm. um, uh, show me the data on that. I don't think it exists. Um, and you, your teacher has designed the class with the big picture in mind, and it's important to try and follow along as it is planned. Because if I drop in and out of what I'm going to do, it's not, it probably won't be as effective. I mean, you're, you, you're a student and a teacher are, are partners in this task. And the, if you want to look at it as an opponent or as a challenge is, is the exam. Yes. And you board. both, yeah, you, you're, the teacher and student both have the same goal in mind, and that is to, to, to slay the dragon that is the AP exam. <laughs> um, um, it's good also to not be thrown by things you, you see that you don't know. It, it happens. It will happen. It, every year. It, every year. It will happen. I, I've, I've been reading AP exams for, since 2003. And every year, one 
one of the first questions people ask is, do you teach that? <laughs> you know, have you taught, did you teach on um, the basilar membrane or, or whatever, something that appeared on the exam that caught teachers across the country sort of off guard and things like that. Perspective memory, stuff like that. Yeah, and it's not that the... Um, People who make the exams are sitting there like over a cauldron saying, ah, ha, ha, ha. That's how I like to see. imagine it, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how we can fool these people. But they they put things on there that in good faith that they think is fair to ask in some context. And it's very, very, very possible that I didn't, I'm not familiar with that. However, however, you will be familiar with the great majority of it. Yes. Unfortunately, we do tend to remember with the whole um, availability heuristic, we do tend to remember things that stand out. So, oh gosh, I didn't know that question. Ah, I didn't know anything. No, you did. You came to class every day. You covered content as well as you did. You'll be familiar with the great majority of things on that, on that exam. And that... I think that can help a person relax to not focus on the unknown. There, there will be, there will be unknowns, mm -hmm. but that's just like, um, that's why you take the exam. That's why um, teams play the, play the, the matches or the games and all, because yeah. um, you don't know exactly are... what the next play might be. If you're playing yeah, defense but... and the offense is going up. Yeah. And, and things will happen and things will happen that you don't expect. And um, that's part of the, 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 that's part of the challenge of it. And the exam is, um, overall, I mean, the exams, the exam is a good measure of a introductory psychology course. Yes. And it's very comprehensive and that's mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be. And that's, that's, that's kind of why it's neat. Mm -hmm. um, I think something that is very subjective that's very important is for students to take responsibility for getting into the class, to cover it, to apply it to themselves and things like that. I think psychology is very, it's, it's hard not to apply it to the world around you mm -hmm. or yourself and things like that. But it's so, it's up, I think it's, we get so much out of it and it's so much easier to remember and apply if we, we, we think about ourselves into the in in the context of the questions or the, the concepts and things like that um absolutely i mean we we talk about that in the memory unit like if you make it relatable you're much more likely to store that information and recall it later uh -huh. on uh -huh. and not only that but i feel that students who start applying those terms and concepts to their own life like enjoy the class more oh sure i had i had a student this year they kept, they emailed me maybe three or four times going, oh, check this out. And it relates to X, Y, Z concept. And you could tell they were enjoying it. And like, I don't know if I had a student enjoy the class as much because they just kept emailing me stuff. Hey, check this out, Mr. Allen, check this out. And, uh -huh. and I, you know, challenge every student to do that with psychology because it relates to everything, absolutely everything. It um, and it'll make the class so much more enjoyable and you'll be much more likely to memorize and recall the content when it comes to test time as well. Oh, for sure. I, I've been really lucky because I've had, I've had four students go on to get their PhDs in psychology and see three, three are clinical, are clinicians and one's a, um, an academic, he's a researcher, but not all of them got fives. Well, wow. not all of them got fives. And I remember this one, this one student, he did, no, you didn't get a five, but he really got a lot out of the, out of psychology. He, he, I mean, he asked great questions and things. And um, it's, it's something that has everything to do with us. And I, I know for myself, I could never have been a clinician. I don't have the, the patience nor the, the disposition to do it, but it's something that can apply in so many different areas of our life that go far beyond the exam. Yeah. But the but learning the things in psychology, especially AP psychology, because it is very comprehensive, is so valuable beyond just passing the exam. 
I mean, if I never take the exam, but I get a lot out of the class and I, I learn more about the people around me, the environment around me, it helps me be more critical um, reader of research or news articles and things like that. I, that was a good class for me to take, you know? And I think, but they, it's, it's kind of like the process of um, um, training for a marathon and someone who finishes the marathon might see it as validating all of that training, especially if they, they meet their goals. That would be like, you know, scoring well on the exam and all, but not necessarily. There is value in the process as well. Yes. I mean, one of the things I, I have to fight when I'm teaching is staying on one topic too long because I find it so interesting. I mean, I've been teaching it, it seems like forever. It was easier when I first started teaching psychology because you could just write to uh, people like like Freud and stuff and ask them about their theories and all. But you know, times have gone, times have changed since then. Um, um, and, and you have to write letters. Of, Freud didn't have email and stuff. But it was, <laughs> yeah, the the process of studying is so valuable in and of itself. Learning how the the scientific method works understanding the nature of psychological disorders um, or how, um, how our senses or how our memory works and things mm -hmm. like that has value so far beyond the exam. But just like the, the, the marathon for someone who's been trained for it, the exam might validate what I did to study for it, but there's so much, there's so much important knowledge that comes in the process. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think I'd be really sad if I had a student who did really well, got a five on the exam and said, thank goodness, no more psychology for me. Sure. I, I would personally, as a teacher, I would see that as a, I'll be really sad. Yeah. I'd be disappointed in that. I mean, that's, that's fine if they don't want to study it anymore, but I hope, I hope that there was something intrinsic they got out of it. Sure. Um, on top of just their scores and all, but I think the two are related that I think this intrinsic it's, it's an interesting, I'm, I'm biased, but it's an interesting topic. And I think this intrinsic motivation to, to learn about it and apply it around us helps us to do, do better in the class and on the exam. Um, so the two can, the two are not mutually exclusive. And it's fun to throw around psycho psychological jargon with your non-psychology student friends too. <laughs> it is. You it know, is. If, if, if someone is, um, um, can't think of, um, the name of a song or something like ah oh, well that um retroactive um interference there <laughs> you know the important thing i think the advice i would give students who's trying to do that is just throw out the term or concept but don't say what it is wait till someone asks you and then you got them yeah and they'll be in psych class the next year yeah yeah that's cool now something i've always wanted to ask you actually is do you have a favorite psych unit Oh gosh, motivation. Yeah. Oh yeah, by by far because I think I personally think psych motivation is always a confounding variable. Why? Because I think I don't and I and I challenge my students for the, with this. I say, um, I don't believe you can tell me anything that motivates every organism that's exposed to it to the same degree every time. That motivation can never be fully accounted for. And that's trying to motivate living creatures, but especially a complex one like a human yeah. is something that is so difficult. Yeah, That is so incredibly difficult. I find that so Interesting. I, I tell my students, if you can come up with, a, with a, um, 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 an elixir mm -hmm. that can guarantee everyone who ingests it will have a given amount of motivation. And it doesn't even have to be 100%. But I can guarantee if you take this elixir, this person will have at least yes. this much motivation. I said, you'd be a, you'd be a, you'd be a billionaire. Billionaire, easily. Easily. I said, but nothing... There's nothing like that yet. 
You know, and I always found that to be a really fascinating concept, um, especially when looking at people and gosh, why did, why did they do that? You know, whether it's a very negative example or a very positive example, uh, uh, or pro-social example or a very negative example, um, how, why did they do, what were they thinking? There's only one person that can answer that question. The Themselves. person that's doing it. And sometimes not even them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the person can't even name it. They, maybe they, they don't even know what, why they did what they did, but they did it. Um, that mom that lifts the car up to pull her kid out from under it. Yeah. Could never replicate it. No. But they did it that time. Tore every muscle in their back, but yeah. they did it. I, I just find that just, oh, I just fascinating. Find that fascinating. I, um, when I was in graduate school, I, I, I just, I spent a lot of time on that. I just found that really interesting. And when I used to, in my back, my coaching days, I always found that really neat to, to try and um, motivate people from different backgrounds and all yeah, to get, go towards the same goal and all. And it's, it, this is an interesting trial and error um, of period. I, there may not be something that can get everybody to be motivated to X level, but I'll tell you what, I'm an easy person. I tell my students, it doesn't take much. Just, just bring me pizza. I'm good to go. You know, like say, <laughs> say, say, Hey, you want to help me move? There's pizza. I'll, I'll, I'll help you move. I'm there. You know, I, I, um, one thing I used to do with some of my teams that, that did really well was kind of a, um, what lay people often say is reverse psychology. Oh, that term drives me daddy. But, um, um, when people would come out, I'd say, if this isn't the number one place you want to be in this period of time after school, please, please don't come up. If this isn't absolutely where you want to be right now, please, please don't come out. No, no, no judgment. Just don't come out. Because if I can assume you're all here because you want to be here, the motivation part becomes almost irrelevant. Yes. And that worked like a charm for a long time. Mm -hmm. But then I, one of the reasons I stopped coaching was I, 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 I couldn't evolve. So I went extinct, kind of like the dinosaurs, where there was, it seems like there was a paradigm shift where, you know, I, I was very successful in um, not keeping track of role and things like that, that you were here because you wanted to be. But then there was this, shift and trying to really minimize the ex extrinsic or external motivations and trying to really avoid the over justification effect and all of that stuff. But then there seemed like there was a paradigm shift to like, oh, okay, that means I can, that means you don't expect anything out of me. You know, so I'll just hide in the bushes and um, do it. Yeah. Do yeah. Yeah. And you're not taking roles. So I'm not even, I'm not going to show up, you know, um, and that was, yeah, that, that, that whole thing shifted and that no longer worked. I mean, I think if, um, but it worked for a while. I think if motivation was a more predictable thing, mm -hmm. oh heck, I could have ridden that horse for forever. Sure. But I think people Based are on good. your personal observations, when did that roughly happen? Uh, ah, gosh. Probably the mid, the mid 2000s, like two, like right around 210, just about um, between 210 and 220. Um, and it was very striking. You know, I had done that for a long time and it was really, it was, it was really good. And we had good teams, but then it just sort of shifted where um, um, there's a lot more focus on um, it needed to be fun or it needed to be, you know, they needed to have um, more bells and whistles to make it worth their while. And that became much more of an expectation. And um, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't really adjust. So I stepped away from it. And um, I don't regret that, but it, it was, it was interesting to see it, it change. Um, so uh, it, it, it'd be a rabbit hole for another time, but it'd be interesting to discuss why, why there's shift in mentality. But we, we won't go there tonight. Um, is there a 
textbook or not textbook, but a, a study review book that you would recommend over another? Oh gosh, there's, I know there's, there's two that I have pretty a fair amount of experience with um, that the AMSCO book is good. And that one's very thorough. It's I yeah, mean, detailed, very detailed. I mean, heck that could, that could sub for a, um, that could be a textbook. Yes. Yeah. And I think, I think some people do use it that way. Um, I think the Baron's guide is also very good. Um, it's concise and, then, and to the point. Yeah. And there's that other one with uh, different questions. I, like I there's an there's an auxiliary book. There's the um, the the Baron's book, the green yes, one. Yes. And then there's a there's a smaller one that was like a, a certain number of que- like just questions. Oh cool. I didn't even know that. Yeah, and those are those are very good and concise. And I think if you're using the um the Myers textbook, the um Strive for Five is pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, um I have less experience with that one. Yeah. But the students I had that used it, that one year I did use it was they they liked it. Um mm-hmm. I, I try not. I try to use the textbook resources as much as possible, but those have been very helpful. The, um, the um, Baron's um, flashcards are helpful too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, full disclosure, though, I'm I'm acquaint friendly, very friendly acquaintances with the authors of those three publications. <laughs> So I kind of, <laughs> I'm not, so I can say that. And I, I do like the Baron's book. I do really like the Baron's book. Um, yeah. Um, and Emsco is super detailed. And if you really are like, Hey, I really don't understand this. Cause the, this doesn't explain it. X or Y, Z doesn't explain it. Um, then go Amsco, but Baron's for just, just concise and understandable. It's very understandable and presented in a way that kids can understand. Yeah. I think the Amsco book, if your content is not we were talking about the um, last minute thing that we could do to um, review in the last few weeks before the exam. I think the AMSCO book for drilling would be very useful because not only does it have content, but if if it's an auxiliary to another textbook, it also states things in another way. Yes. That's that sometimes for students that can just be like the light bulb just comes yes. on, like, oh now I get it. The example's slightly different and yeah. it clicks. Yeah, I like and that. It, and it's good practice too to apply it in a slightly different way because the definition on the exam is not going to be ex- the exact one in your textbook either. Correct. So it's good to see it in multiple ways. Um, I remember back in the old days um, at the AP reading um, when I was a table leader, <laughs> again, before the internet, we were asked to bring copies of textbooks that we had lying around, like the actual hard copies. And when we try to hammer out the um, rubric, we would look at whether the interpretation was fair based on the sample of textbooks that we had. Okay, how does this cover it? How does that cover it? How does this cover it? Okay, so let's whittle this down and not make it so specific that it's only, that it greatly favors you if you're using this textbook or that textbook. Um, so it is good for students to be a little flexible with the definitions and all. And I think, the um, Baron's book are good in the way that you say they're concise. So it doesn't, the definitions I think are, are easy, the, the flashcards I think they're, they're, they're easily digestible and you know, they're, they're easy to use. Um, and I, I, I like them. I have, I have several classroom sets that um, s- students can use and things. And I think using those for review regularly are very, are very, very, very useful. Um, and like I say, the AMSCO book can be used as a textbook or it's good where if I'm reviewing, but maybe I'm not so certain about my content knowledge about this unit, the AMSCO book can be very helpful there too, where I don't have to refer back to the textbook. I can probably get a sufficient amount of content knowledge right there. Yeah, it's great, it's great. Yeah, and, and going back to the the um, Barron's flashcards, one thing I do, and it, and this is not like the only thing students should rely on. It's more of a fun way to get shallow level review in. But what I do is, I don't know if you've ever played or heard of the game Heads Up, 
Oh no. It's where um, uh, you take a term. So I use the terms from the, the Baron's cards and, and you put them on your head. So I have the term oh, here okay. and I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. And the, the rest of the group does. And so they have to describe, the group has to describe it to the person and they have to guess. So like, let's say, you know, it's, it's occipital lobe. So they, you know, someone say the group, I wouldn't know it's occipital lobe and people would be like, okay, it's part of your brain. I start shouting out parts of the brain. It's a part of the brain that, you know, helps process vision. vision. And then oh, okay. I need to know the term occipital lobe in order to get the point. Um, and so I have kids. I should do a whole video on it for just teachers. It's just a fun, silly review game. Yeah, that is. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely love those those Baron review, review uh -huh, cards, uh -huh. flashcards. Yeah, and there's, I remember a couple of years ago, they, um, when the pandemic first hit, I know several of these companies made some um, like desk copies free and you could just get them and all. So I think they're, I think they, the publishers see themselves in kind of the same boat I mean, it's supportive of us. And I think that's, that, 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 that's, that's wonderful. Like I say, I know, I know, I know the authors of these things and they're all, they're, they're very knowledgeable, solid people and yeah. they'll, they'll, they're very responsive too. I mean, if students were to look them up and write to them, they would, um, I think they kind of enjoy if students point things out to them that they don't agree with, or they think they found the flaw with that. I think they really enjoy that. Nice. Nice. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things, I, in terms of just terms I learned in the past few years here is someone mentioned it, I think on the actual teacher page that we're on is to use the APA website to look up a term. Like if you want to quick yeah. look up the term and it's like, Oh, you know um, you know, maybe I don't own AMSCO or I don't own Baron, but I have, you know, Myers at home. Cause that's what the teacher assigned me or whatever. I, I don't get it here go to the APA website, search the term, because it literally just Google APA dictionary. It's probably one of the first links that pops up and then you could Google any term. And that's another way to look at a term that might not make sense to you. Yeah, I, I have my room decorated with word walls. Nice. So there's vocab everywhere around uh -huh. the room. And it kind of helps sell the class too, because my world history students are always asking about like, hmm, what is the cerebellum <laughs> anyway? You know? yes. um, but they're everywhere. and um, uh, I just I think like with um, um, just incidentally just having it there, they will you can't help but be familiar with them if they're they're right there. It makes uh, quizzing vocabulary a little more tricky. Yes, because they're all there. <laughs> but, yes. um, but I I I've done that for a long time where students sometimes they'll just take pictures of the wall. <laughs> like, oh, okay, but that's another discussion for another yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so kids always ask, oh, what techniques should I use to study, you know, for maybe a unit test or, you know, at the end of the year, what advice do you typically give? Oh, te testing effect. I mean, to, um, practice actually answering questions without seeing the answer. I mean, you can do that as simply as with flashcards that are blank on one side or another. I think rereading notes, rereading the textbook is very, very inefficient. Mm -hmm. Better than nothing, agree. but again, very inefficient. Um, but actually testing oneself, and a lot of the textbooks have these things available. A lot of a lot of teachers make these things available where someone can actually quiz themselves with it. And there again, Quizlets can be very Quizlets can be very yes. helpful. Um, and the point is not how easy it is to find these things because they are. Yeah, and we all know we all know that the point is being able to use it. I mean, I can buy a really good pair of running shoes that costs, you know, 150 bucks. That proves nothing. It I need to go out faster. and actually, yeah, I need to go out and use it. S similarly, um, um, I used to make my runners on a team like write in their uh, these log books what they did. That is only benefiting you. Yes. You can write down anything you want, <laughs> but it doesn't help you. I mean looking up things on the internet for the sake of turning it in for an assignment does nothing for you. Yeah. Um, and I, but I think genuinely, honestly, testing oneself, like asking, a, you know, looking at questions without the answer, answering it and keeping track. Well, okay, I got it right. I didn't get it right. Self quizzes and things are, 
I think that is by far the most efficient way to learn to, to learn things after covering the content. Yep. And I I think quizzing oneself without reading the textbook is kind of a just a, it's somewhat an exercise in futility. There is no substitute for yes. content knowledge. But as far as like actually learning the content knowledge and being able to retrieve it, the testing effect is very the testing effect is very, very efficient where you actually do quiz yourself or test yourself. I have a couple of thoughts on what you just said. I, I like Quizlet. Mm. However, you got to be careful if, as a student, if you go and try to get or use someone else's Quizlet, mm. you know, maybe Psych Lover 66, their, you know, screen name or handle or whatever, uh, they, they might have wrong definitions in there. <laughs> they might have missing terms in there. So be very careful. Yep. It's much more beneficial to create your own. Yes, it's yes. more time consuming, but you get that rehearsal, you get that repetition, and therefore it is more likely to stick in your memory. So just be careful when using Quizlet. And personally, I feel, and I, I bet there's, I got to go back and look, but I'm sure there's research on this. I feel that writing things out by hand versus typing on the computer, uh, uh, you're more likely to recall that information. Now, I, I could be making that up, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there's studies out there that have supported that. You know, there was a group that I heard present one time and um, it was one member of, um, they were called the, the learning scientists and they had a little, um, they had a, um, a little YouTube channel, but it seems to have gone, I think the videos are still there, but they, I don't, I'm not sure they actually um, make any more. But I had a chance to ask at a conference about that very thing, about like writing out flashcards versus using a set that's pre-made. And the assertion was that there wasn't a significant oh, difference. Really? Huh. I have a real hard time just implicitly buying that. Sure, yeah. The data I could may be wrong. Show, I could be wrong. The, the data may show this, that, or the other, but I, I have a hard time imagining that or conceiving that it's not more helpful to actually put time in mm -hmm. to write something out. I, I mean, I feel like you're going slower and when you're going slower, you're, you're pro I, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm speculating, hypothesizing off the top of my head here, but I mean, especially if you're writing it in your own words, yes, especially, or if you're writing a, a novel application to it, I cannot imagine that's, le that's less helpful or equally helpful to basically reading something that someone did. But, well, that's that's another shortcoming of Quizlet guys, in that people who just copy and paste off the internet the definition. That's I mean, eventually you'll get it if you keep repeating and rehearsing. But when you write in your own words, that's that's a good point. Yeah, and that the the beauty of Quizlet is that you can use, it's easy to use to mm -hmm. quiz yourself with it. But again, and I think that part is still true regardless if you're using somebody else's or your own. But that's a very good point. If you're in somebody else's, well, you're at their mercy as far as accuracy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it, it's and I, I look at the testing effect is kind of like scrimmages. You can practice skills all you want, but at a certain point, doing it in kind of um, game situations, so to speak, is, has a lot of value. Has a lot of value. And especially if you keep track of the things that are not, that, that seem to challenge you more than others. You know, is it unit two or unit five or whatever, or questions having to do with the the ear or having to do with, you know, memory or something like that. That, if you keep track, that can be very um, revealing, um, and especially if there's a way to not to study more than one unit. I mean, I understand many unit tests are just on the one unit because some of the units are pretty big, but the exam will be mixed. Yes. And it is good to have some practice with that and maybe have a little um, cumulative section or maybe trade trade with others, you know, or refer back to an old one or, or something like that. Just something to bring in the past knowledge so that you're accustomed to handling more than one topic area at one time, at one sitting. Absolutely. Um, although that could be counterproductive if your teacher is just doing a test on unit two. <laughs> And you're studying units four and five along with unit two. Yes. 
That, 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 that is the challenge. That is the challenge. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, you know, you're doing learning and cognition. And if you want to refer back to bio, another big unit, you're like, oh my gosh, that can get tough. Yeah. That can get yeah. real tough. The other um, piece of advice I would recommend is definitely using the college board quizzes. Yeah. That's, that's a huge help. And now I, I'm sorry to teachers out there, uh, especially new teachers, because that's just one more thing for teachers to set up. But if your teacher has the college board quizzes and the, the portal, college board portal access for you, highly, highly recommend it. Now, this is not, you know, scientifically based at all, but I did see when they introduced it a couple of years ago, on average, the kids who did the practice quizzes before the unit tests, my unit test did better um, than past years. And on average, the class grades were higher. Now that was one, you know, one year of information before COVID hit, but I, I think it is helpful and just to see and practice with those questions. Well, at the very least, it is a tested effect. At the very least, you are quizzing yourself. And that's that's gonna help. Yeah. I mean that will help. Uh, no, I, I love flashcards, but it's you're also you, you, with flashcards you, you can you can cheat yourself. Sure. Uh, oh yeah, I, I knew it, you know, hindsight bias, right? I, I knew that, of course. And with, you know, at least some sort of online AP psych quiz program, it's like, oh, you got it wrong or you got it right. You actually did know it or maybe you did guess. But And the benefit of the same reading questions by kind of the collaborative of folks that are going to write the questions for the exams, that's helpful too. Because a test bank for a textbook may or may not have right. the same style or the wordings and stuff. Whereas College Board, well, they, they write their own stuff. So mm -hmm. that's that's good practice too. And if know, nothing else, if, right. Do you know who writes those things? Some of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. It, it's interesting. I, I got on one of the exams one time. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I was on a for, for a queue. Nice. Um, um, I was studying for a bunch of classes and feeling overwhelmed and um um i don't think i was portrayed in a real uh, favorable light oh it was about you yeah yeah i mean it was like carl is studying oh, for exams and okay, stuff like that okay okay I mean, okay. yeah i got I, you i just tried to think about which of those jokers did it but it was uh, <laughs> yeah 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 that's funny yeah yeah um you know one of the guidebooks my wife and i made it in there too that <laughs> carl and elsa were right raising their children and trying Do you think that was intentional them. Oh yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah. That's funny. Because <laughs> my wife's name is Elsa. Yeah. I mean, it's like oh. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's it's in somebody's guidebook. I don't know whose one it was. Um so, I mean I'm in Joe Swope's book too. Huh. I mean, so <laughs> So any uh, other tips? Oh gosh. I, while you're thinking about it, I got one. Um, and I'll probably make a video about this, but statistically speaking, the unit that is going to show up the most is unit one, statistically yeah. speaking, which is your research methods and your statistics. Now, mm -hmm. of course, your kind of history of psychology stuff, background information will show up on there too, but a, it there's a tendency now now that i say this the people are going to listen and change it all up on us right there's a tendency <laughs> to uh, uh include a lot of the research methods on there you know what's the difference between an experiment correlational study etc 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 so you know definitely consider weights of each of the units and and, and in saying that i tell my students you got to know everything you really do um or at least have a comprehensive overview of everything understanding of everything but yeah unit one spend a lot of time on because you know at least one frq is going to be unit one heavy and then i had the numbers or the percentage percentages written out at one point uh, but a large portion i think up to like 25 percent of the whole test could be unit one i think i did the math one time so just a thought 
Actually, I, I think there's, there's something I put up in kind of like a banner or something like that in the room. <laughs> um, and I think I put it up in a locker room too, is do it because you want to, not mm -hmm. because you have to. Sure. You know, um, psychology is life. It's us. Yes. You know, it applies to us. It applies to the world around us. Want to learn about it, not just because you have to. Want to be there and 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 you'll you'll do okay. Yeah. You know, do it because you want to, not because you have to. Yeah. Well, sorry. You, that's, no, that's you're good. Little, that's kind of lame, but it's, it's <laughs> you're it's good. Like it. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking the time to oh, this talk to me today. This was a pleasure. This is a pleasure. I really it's, enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been such a long time since you get to actually sit on and talk psychology because my my family gets it gets old for them pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you can talk to me anytime, and and for the people out there who don't know, we're part of a teacher social media AP Psych group or as some people like to call it and i like i like it the hive mind the psych hive mm, mind i love mm. it so um it's fun to just talk to other psych teachers out there it sure is it sure is and and collectively we got everything we need yes yep and it's 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 really cool and people help each other and and do it with a with a with a good spirit of of collaboration yep so shout out to the hive mind out there yes yes and to the students listening, if you have questions about the test or stuff we talked about, throw those questions in the comments. Um, you know, if you're willing, I'm sure we could get back together again and maybe oh, answer yeah. some of those questions in the future, um, especially in regards to the test. And, you know, we, we want every student to succeed, not just our own. Um, we are yeah. on your side. And the test is eminently doable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a challenge, but not nowhere near an impossible one correct and it's it's a good challenge it's a yeah. it's a it's a good fair challenge in my opinion awesome well thank you so much mm -hmm.